How are you? Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is today's business. And um, we have uh, Dr. Austin Anyogu, an economic analyst, joining us right now on the show. And we'll be diving deep and looking at, um, first of all, how the private sector has fared so far with the COVID-19 pandemic and how they can bounce back as uh, there is the gradual easing of the economy. Um, Dr. Austin, good morning. Welcome to today's business. Good morning, ma'am. All right. So um, uh, we'll be talking about how the private sector involvement and um, how far they have uh, fared as uh, the COVID-19 um, pandemic, you know, hits the nation. So first of all, let's start with assessing um, the private sector contribution so far to fighting the pandemic um, um, here in, in Nigeria. How would you assess the private sector contribution um, so far? Um, thank you very much. I, I, think, I think the private sector have done real well. Dr. Austin, do we have you there? Uh, all right, I think there are some technical glitches that we're trying to. All right, um, Dr. Austin is back with us. Hello, Dr. Austin. Uh, good morning, I'm still here. All right, welcome back. Yes, we, we, we stopped, we lost you, um, we lost the call with you um, while you were speaking about um, the contribution of the private sector you know, to the fight against um, uh, the pandemic so far. So please just go ahead. Yes, I said the uh, private sector have done really well. Um, I think they took the initiative um, at the beginning of this pandemic. We saw billions of Naira being donated and um, donated to the federal government to enable the curbing of the pandemic. Then apart from that, I've also seen private sector teaming up with Central Bank of Nigeria, um, anchored by the MD, Managing Director of Access Bank, who, who on their own decided to pull their resources together to, uh, to fight uh, this pandemic. They built uh, isolation centers. Uh, even some banks on their own, GCP, for example, built and as well as in Lagos, they, were, they brought in equipment, they brought in um, testing kits, they did palliatives, you know, and then um, quite frankly, a huge contribution actually came more from um, the private sector. And I, I begin to wonder, you know, mo most of these private sectors we're talking about, we're doing it based on corporate social responsibility. Majority of them are not even in the health sector, but rather in other sectors, but they were able to rally around to assist the government. You know, and um, we, we the uh, onlookers, actually worried about um, how was their contribution being put to use? Uh, because we've had comments from the chairman of the presidential tax force saying that um, the, the money is not in their possession, this is this, this is that. But however, I will, run, I will rank the contribution of the private sector very, very high because um, they took the boost by the horn. The billions were rolling in, millions were rolling in, and they didn't stop at that. Everybody was contributing. People considering their own level. Some people even did direct palliative, you know, to individual. And I, I was also wondering that because it will affect their bottom line. You know, to have an effect on the economy itself, economy on the private sector, economy on the government, and even economy on the, of the, on, on the individuals. So for me, the private sector has really risen to the occasion. All right, Doctor. Um, let's dive into the gradual easing of the um, economy. Uh, the, the Lagos State Government uh, earlier in the week um, posted that um, it's going to be 
uh, a six weeks period with two um, weeks fees each. It means every two weeks um, there will be gradual easing of the economy, businesses will be beginning to reopen and we have been hearing that from the PTF that churches, uh, um, um, sorry, worship centers, um, entertainment centers as well should probably get ready to, you know, open business with some um, measures that we put in place to ensure safety. Now, people are saying there is still some fears that if the economy opens, this thing, the, 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 the COVID-19 is going to go, you know, is going to go beyond what we can manage. Do you share the same fears as well? No, frankly, I, I don't share the same sentiments uh, because, um, well, let, let's even take it from this point of view. The, the Nigerian system is quite different from the Italian system, the Spanish system, the American system. You know, and in terms of immune, we, 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 we grew up under a very hard um, atmospheric condition. We, we, are not, we are not used to uh, pneumonias, except for a few who probably will be exposed to air, air conditioners. We are not used to, so, so, so many Nigerians has so much inside them that certain illnesses don't even get to them easily. I don't share such sentiment. Let me, let, let, let me frankly tell you, um, as, at, as at two days ago, I've not taken count of yesterday, we had 182 deaths, you know, ascribed to COVID-19. And I keep saying, I said, I, there have been situations where even a local government will have recorded a certain number of deaths in other ailment, uh, ailments, other sicknesses. But we're talking about nationwide, 182 or 80 or plus, because I didn't take note of what happened yesterday. So I don't share the same sentiment. We, we will definitely survive. What government needs to do is to be more educative in terms of informing the people, keep hammering on social distancing, keep hammering of a uh, hygienic uh, lifestyle, then put proper equipment in place that will enable whoever that feels sick to go and seek treatment. You know, this time, government has closed many hospitals. So all we depend upon is um, the, 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 the government isolation centers and treatment centers. And not all ailments are COVID related. You know, let me, say, let me, let me, let me bring, bring, bring you to this very vital point. There is possibility for people to die of boredom, to die of depression. Because if a man that is very active is locked down for several weeks, so many other effects will start coming into him health-wise, you know, and then, um, they even they will record so many um, domestic violence because people who hit us who goes to work are being locked down, you know, and then um, a whole lot of um, effects, negative effects could come from that. So I, I, I want to, I don't share the sentiment that um, it's going to be blown out of proportion. If it has not blown out of proportion while the, uh, the gradual easing took place, then I don't think uh, we're going to experience anything more than what we're experiencing. So government just needs to tell us how to boost our immune system so that we can develop antigens internally that will fight this, uh, this virus. And then um, that is the area of education. And I think that um, that will do a long, um, go a long way to prevent any of such um, expectation. Dr. Anyogo, um, before I go into um, the way forward, Let's talk about the case in Kano. Um, um, we hear that worship centers will be opened, you know, for people to go, you know, say their prayers and church. People will go to church, people will go to mosque. But there are fears that this is going to, it's going to become something else because um, according to um, someone we had uh, yesterday uh, talk to us, he's he, he scared of the situation in Kano. Some of them go out without their masks and, you know, the uh, um, um, safety measures are not really being put in place by some of the residents that are there. Um, what, what's your take on that? Well, um, Kanu is a peculiar place. 
Kanu is actually a peculiar place because um, we have had, we have seen um, um, video clips of people even singing the stuff like Babu Corona. You know, in our language, Babu means that there is no Corona. So it is, the government needs to do more. Let me be honest with you. With our face marks, to some extent, we are protected. Because if you wear a face mask, properly, um, properly um, made for infectious control, then we are protected. Because if you're talking to me and you're wearing a face mask, and I'm also wearing mine, it means that the percentage or the, the likelihood of me contacting whatever you have is almost equal to zero, you know? So the, the government needs to do more of education. I don't know how they're going to do about it, especially in Canada, because the truth is this, social distancing. I asked someone, how do you socially distance from your children? You know, because some of them will cling on you, some of them will come on your bed, some of them will hug you, and then maybe you're a family of seven, and it happens in every family. You know, so it is, even if I, even if from my own understanding, if I, if my hands contact the virus, and I'm conscious of my hygiene, and I'm able to wash my hand immediately with soap and sanitize it, the essence of doing that is the virus will die. And I prevent touching my face, my nose, my eyes, and my mouth. I want to believe that I am already taking precautions from contacting the disease. So uh, the government in Canada needs to educate them more vigorously and enforce the use of masks. Send people back home if they are not uh, wearing their masks. Put uh, sanitary uh, options everywhere. Let the mosques have avalanche of walking uh, hand washing um, points before you get into the worship place. Let them also fumigate or decontaminate they, they, they their, their, their environment. I don't. I, I think uh, the virus will be curtailed. I, I don't. I, I don't see. Um, much, what well, much you can do in Canada other than educating the people to appreciate that the virus exists and what they need to do not to contact the virus. All right, quickly, before it. we go, let's just delve into the oil sector. We saw that uh, the price of oil surged to $35 per barrel. Um, and some experts are saying Nigeria should not be excited. Don't make any, uh, don't make any plans with this surge that has happened. Um, should we be excited about that? I mean, should we expect that the, the surge will continue as some economies are really beginning to reopen at this point in time? Well, I also share the same uh, sentiment that we shouldn't be excited. Why did I say so? Um, what, what we're seeing is the effect of uh, OPEC, OPEC actions of cutting product, uh, production. We, 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 we are full, the world right now is full of uncertainty. And the uncertainty simply means that a lot of risk is embedded. So I, I completely will ask, especially tell Nigeria not to be too excited. Yes, funny enough, we have, re, re, we have re, reprogrammed our budget. And we have used 30 naira per liter to do our budget. But however, 35 at 35, it looks as if we should be excited. But I tell you, remember the initial budget. Initial budget was at 57 or thereabout. And then um, we, 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 are, we, are, we are not close to it based on the programs and the plans that the government has. I know the government has trimmed their program, they have trimmed the budget. But um, with, the, with, with the economy full of uncertainty, it is not the right time to start jubilating. All so right. I, 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 I see for yes, I see for see a uh, lot of uh, turbulence, All you right. know, in the system. Thank not you, Dr. Anyago. Thank you so much. That's yeah. a very good way to land. Um, thank you so much. Nigerians should not be excited yet. Um, we should uh, probably watch to see what happens and, if possible. As recommended, diversify. Why should we rely on oil um, for most of the time? Thank you so much, Dr. Austin Nanyogu, um, uh, economic analysis, uh, analyst, for joining us on today's business. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.